when we linearize a vector function, we use the Jacobi matrix. The determinant of this matrix is called the Jacobian. This Jacobian is used when we make a change of variables in double or triple integrals. For example, when we use polar coordinates or spherical coordinates. So, what is this Jacobi matrix and how do we compute the Jacobian? That is what you will learn in this video. So suppose we have some function from R2 to R2 and some point x not y not, and this function has two components. What we are going to do first is we are going to linearize this function. So what do we have? We have basically two functions of two variables, and we will both linearize them. So f1 equals f1 at the point x not y not, because partial derivative with respect to x, times x minus x not plus partial derivative with respect to y times y minus y not. We do the same for the second function, f2 is a function that at the point x not y not plus partial derivative with respect to x times x minus x not plus partial derivative with respect to y times y minus y not. And then we can put them back in a vector and we write f1 and f2 over here. So f1 we bring the f1 at x0 minus comma y0 to the other side. So f1 minus f1 at the point is given by these two terms, written as first component of the vector. Bring this one to the other side as well. Then we have f2 of x and y minus f2 at the point is approximately equal to these two terms, which are written as second component of the vector. And then we see that we can pull out the x minus x0, so we get an x minus x0 times some vector plus a y minus y0 times some other vector. And then we see we have scalar times vector plus scalar times vector, so we can write this as matrix times vector. So we have, we have written f minus f at the point as a matrix times a vector. Now, this motivates us to introduce the so-called Jacobi matrix. This matrix in general is called the Jacobi matrix. So it contains the partial derivatives f1, x, f1, i, f2, x, f2, y. And if you have some bigger function from r3 to r3, you get f1, x, f2, y, sorry, f1, y, f1, z, f2, x, f2, y, f2, z, f3, x, f3, y, f3, z. So it just continues. And now we see how can, how can we use this matrix. Well, if you plug in x0, y0, you see that f1 minus uh, f, uh, f1 at the point, and same for f2, is approximately equal to this Jacobi matrix at the point x0, y0 times this vector over here. So that is where you encounter this Jacobi matrix. Now the Jacobian, that's just the determinant of the Jacobi matrix. So once you know what the Jacobi matrix is, you also know the Jacobian, it's just a determinant. So let us do a small example. So here we have a particular f, we have an over here and some point. First we compute a general Jacobi matrix. It contains the partial derivatives of the first component with respect to x and to y. And it contains the, in the second row the partial derivatives of the second component with respect to x and with, with respect to y. So there we have the Jacobi matrix. And of course we can evaluate it at this point x0, y0, we just plug in x equals 2 and y equals 1, and then you get this Jacobi matrix at this particular point. Now, what about the Jacobian? Well, that is just the determinant of this matrix. So the general Jacobian is given by the determinant of this matrix over here. So 2x times 3x squared y squared minus 2y times 2xy cubed, which is this over here. And the Jacobian at a particular point, this is just a determinant over here, 4 times 12 equals 48, minus 2 times 4 minus 8 equals 40. And of course you could also have found the Jacobian at the point by plugging in this point in the general expression over there. So this is the Jacobian matrix, and this is how you can compute the Jacobian matrix.